Hey, welcome back. You know, I'm not a big fan of clickbait, especially when that clickbait is designed to mislead people. And that's happening right now in the media, and I'm really not happy about it. Two fairly high profile talking heads who are out there on social media, Charlie Kirk and Candace Owens, have said phenomenally stupid and misleading things about aviation and the people who are involved in it. And it really does irk me because the people who are involved in aviation, in all phases, put a lot of effort into getting there. Especially true for pilots. Recently, and I'm going to read this so I get it correct, Charlie Kirk said, If I see a black pilot, I'm going to be like, boy, I hope he's qualified. This is just mind-numbingly stupid because it's relatively easy to find out what is required to become an airline pilot. Candace Owens piling on and backing up Charlie said this, I would be terrified if I got onto an airplane and I saw a woman flying the plane. Now this is just galactically stupid. Not just because there are an enormous number of people in our history who disprove this point that they are truly qualified people. I mean, have Charlie and Candace never heard of the WASP? The women air service pilots who during World War II ferried airplanes, did training flights, did all sorts of things that relieved the men who were going off into combat and allowed us to do things stateside that moved airplanes around. And these women were remarkable because they might be flying a P-51 Mustang one day and a B-17 bomber the next day and a C-47 transport the next day. These were really talented women who made a tremendous contribution. And to disparage that memory and pretend you don't know that women and blacks and Hispanics and Asians can be qualified pilots, that's just reprehensible. And I'm sorry, but it is. Are they unaware of the history of the Tuskegee Airmen? Young black men who against tremendous odds got involved in aviation in a military setting and made an enormous contribution to the American war effort as fighter pilots in the theater of operation with a remarkable record of success. HBO made a movie about it. It's not like this is a secret. Beyond that, it's relatively easy to find out what is required to become a pilot and rise to the level where you're sitting in the cockpit of an airliner. Just as a thumbnail, you need to get your private pilot certificate. Then you need to get your instrument rating. Then you need to add on a commercial certificate. Then you're probably going to get a CFI and a multi-engine rating. And you're going to spend a couple years getting experience flying smaller, lower powered aircraft. And when you have the experience and the credentials and you start applying to airlines, then you're going to go through more training and testing. And every one of these involves study, classroom, aircraft, being out there taking tests, learning information that the average person has no understanding of, and repeating it and repeating it and repeating it, building on that experience, getting greater insight, operating different types of aircraft, finding some mentorship that helps you rise to a higher level. By the time they get to that airline cockpit, these people are truly skilled. They're very well educated. They have multiple FAA certificates. They've gone through such an enormous labyrinth of testing and training and experience building. It is really disturbing that someone in a position of responsibility and authority would even suggest that because they're female or because they're non-white, they're not qualified to be there. No company anywhere is hiring people with the hopes of turning them into pilots. Airlines don't hire people off the street and say, oh, you're black, you're female, you're left-handed, great, you check three boxes, we want you to be a pilot. That's not how it works. What they're doing is something much more noble than that. What they're doing is saying, we've got job openings, and those job openings have specific requirements. We want you to know our door is open. If you get those requirements, if you do the work necessary to get here, we will interview you. And if you meet our qualifications, we will hire you. That's a world away from what was happening in the 40s and 50s and even in the 60s, when very often 
non-whites or females weren't being interviewed. They weren't being given the opportunity to fly an aircraft like that. They weren't being offered career positions. This is not DEI. It's not diversity, equity, and inclusion. This is opening the door wide and saying, we've got job openings. We have a shortage of pilots. We need people who are interested in this, who are willing to put in the work. And if you are, well, we don't really care what you look like. If you can meet our standards, we want you. And that's the way it should be. Aviation is a meritocracy. If you can pass the test, if you can do the work, if you can act as pilot in command and make the decisions necessary to keep these flights safe, you deserve to be sitting in that front seat. Getting involved in aviation is hard enough without blowhards on social media pretending like some people don't belong while others do. I've loved my career in aviation. It's been fantastic to me. I really have enjoyed it, the good times and the bad. It's been absolutely worth it. But you know, to tell somebody that they don't belong because they don't look right is idiotic. It's mean-spirited. It's, it's wrong. What these talking heads should be saying is America truly is the land of opportunity. Educational opportunities abound. Aviation is global and the United States is the flight training capital of the world. We speak English already. You have an advantage because English is the international language of aviation. If you want to get involved in aviation, you should get involved in aviation. If you can succeed at the educational requirements, if you can pass the tests, you're all set. And let me be absolutely crystal clear about this. There is a practical test standard and an airman certification standard that the FAA and their designated examiners use when testing pilots. It's the exact same standard no matter who you are. You'll perform those maneuvers to those parameters successfully and safely, and if you can, you move up the ladder. If you can't, You've hit the ceiling and that's as far as you go. You won't find people making it to the airline level who just have no background at all, no experience. They just showed up and said, hey, I want to be a pilot, so can you put me up there and I'll just learn it as I go. Airline pilots go through training and testing every six months for their entire career, not just to get hired, but throughout their entire career, whether it's a first officer or a captain, they have to go through testing and training every six months because safety is the prime directive. That's what we're trying to achieve. So to have these people out there talking on social media as if there are some people who are worthy and some people who aren't, or that you can just look at someone and by seeing their physique, by seeing the color of their skin, by noting their hairstyle, I can tell whether you're a good, qualified, safe pilot or not. Well, that's just stupid. That, that's stupid beyond the realm of reason because the research wouldn't be that hard to do. They could have just talked to an airline pilot and say, hey, what, what's involved in becoming an airline pilot? They could just go to the FAA.gov and look up what are the steps to get there. They might even go to the airlines and say, what are your minimum requirements? And they would have known immediately they were 100% full of shit. The message we're sending is one of hope. If you want to fly, if you want a career in aviation, you can have one. It doesn't matter where you're from. It doesn't matter what you look like. It doesn't matter what kind of genitalia you have. It doesn't matter if you're straight or gay. If you want to fly and you want to make it your career, I wish you the best of luck. And we here at Mad Props Aero will do everything we can to help keep you on the right path, give you some tips and tricks that might help you along the way, whether that's financial or procedural. And basically, help you become part of the aviation community that enjoys the lifestyle we live so much. So when you see these blowhard talking heads on social media and you see people talking about who can or who can't succeed, keep in mind, you're in the group of people who can succeed if you want to. All you have to do is put in the effort. And yeah, it does take effort. It does take time. It takes the intent to build experience and learn from those who came before you. But if you can do all those things, you can become successful in aviation and have a phenomenal career. And you don't have to care one bit about what Charlie or Candace have to say about it because they're not pilots. 
they're not training pilots and they're not hiring pilots. They're just people on TV who are blabbering away about whatever comes to mind in such a way that it's clickbait. Worthless, nonsensical clickbait designed to get you hot under the collar. And that is not what gets you ahead in the world. Thanks so much for watching this video. I hope you'll take this seriously because you really can get ahead in aviation. And just look around. There are so many people out there who represent what you look like. And they didn't get there because of what they look like. They've got there in spite of what they look like because it just doesn't matter. Aviation being a meritocracy means just do the work. Just study. Just pass your check ride. Work with other pilots to get that done. And if you do, well, good on you. Please click like on this video if you enjoyed any part of it. Share it on social media if you would because having the truth out there would be helpful to a whole lot of people who were told they can't fly. And subscribe if you would. We would very much appreciate it.